Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today is one of the traditional eight Sabbaths of the pagan year, or the ancient new year, or ancient year, depending on how you want to phrase that. And that is um, August 1st. There are two different names for it, and we're going to kind of break down where these two names come from, and then we'll get into the celebration itself. Uh, the first name is Lamas, which is um, not the traditional name. We'll just use that phrase. Uh, it's the first of the three ancient harvest festivals, and it's the grain harvest. The second one is Mabon, which is the autumn equinox, and the third is Sawain, which is Halloween. So. One possible meaning of the name Lamas is the loaf mass or the lamb mass, depending on which translation you choose to use. Um, and <laughs> if you look at the some of the stuff online, Wikipedia being the weirdest one, they're claiming that Lamas is strictly a Catholic-based holiday. And what there's what they say, and this is a loose quote. I'm not going to go directly. It's a Christian holiday celebrated in, uh, in or around the first of August. It's they claim that the original word is loaf and mass is the Eucharist. So, in their belief, this is a time to celebrate baking of bread, but using it as a form of Eucharist. Um, it's also a blessing of the first fruits of the harvest. Um, and there's generally just a basic loaf of bread that's been brought to the church for that purpose. There's some places that state that the, each family would bring their own loaf, the priest would bless it, then they would take it home to consume it. Others say there would just be bread there that they would have as part of the uh, Eucharist instead of using the little crackers, they'd actually just use the loaf of bread. So, um, they did make a comment in the Wikipedia article that I was like, eh, at least they were being honest about it. And it is the... Uh, this is also the date as the Gaelic Harvest Festival, Lufnasa. Okay, well, that actually is the first holiday. The second one will <laughs> is Lamas. Um, they have a phrase, and I'll I'll go into a little bit of a conspiracy or a theory that I hold with this one uh, that makes you scratch your head a little bit. In the Lamas festival, they do the offering of the first fruits to God. Uh, as in the Old Testament, when the harvest was ripened, the priests went into the field, gathered a sheaf of first ripened grain, took the sheaf to the temple, and waved it before the Lord, or offered it before the Lord. Okay, that's fine and dandy, but <laughs> when we talk about the uh, sacrifices and the uh, offerings, and we go back to the book of Genesis, why did Cain uh, remove his brother Abel? Cain offered the first fruits and first grains, to the Lord, the Lord rejected them. Abel offered a lamb and was accepted, and then Cain got mad and took out his sibling. So why would the church, a few years later, well, a couple thousand years later anyway, switch over and be like, now we're going to offer first grains? Doesn't that, there's no conflict there that maybe needs to be addressed at some point. Again, just my opinion, just a theory that I've, every time I read through some of this stuff, I scratch my head going, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> so, if you like a little conspiracy, there's something to think about. Um, or at least uh, an interesting contradiction in terms. So, the other thing, though, is if you're going to use grains and first fruits, especially at this time of the year, sounds like you're trying to lure some people away for some from some ancient beliefs because that was kind of their tradition first. So, uh, you going back to the concept of the Sabbath, there are a variety of grain gods and goddesses that you can work with at this time. And if you've never looked into that, something you can check out if you would like. Um, I'm going to go over one just really quick because it kind of fits with the holiday. Uh, the other name for this Sabbath is Lufnasad. And this name harkens back to the Tawatha Dadanan, and it owes to one of their deities, which was named Luf, or Lu. Generally, I hear it said Luf, but <laughs> uh, he was a skilled craftsman and lord of the sun and grain. So it fits very well to use grain as a celebration of this deity. 
And we're definitely talking about an ancient festival at this point because the Tuatha de Danann um, records do not have an actual start for them. They are ancient as ancient. And working with this energy, this was a time to bake fresh bread, work with uh, cakes and the newly harvested grains. It's usually you had your holy man, your priest or your shaman, blessing the fields, blessing the first harvests. And so you could use any of those grains as a celebration for this holiday. All forms of the grains were used, including beer, cooked barley, breads, cakes, all of the kind of fun stuff like that. And when we talk about barley, you can literally just get like the pearled barley like this guy here um, and cook it up. You can make it into a mash. You can cook it up by itself and cool it, add some uh, onions and some peppers and a little bit of a vinaigrette. You have a nice, really high protein, really high fiber um, barley salad. So there's a lot of ways you can use specifically barley and that's the one they reference most common. So that's why I use that one. But you can also, the other things that come ripe at this time are the first fruits and that is things like pears. We have black plums, there's some red plums, and these are, I'm not, I wish I had an orchard I had all this stuff in, but I have a really nice organic market close by, so these are ones that I'm using in my stuff. Apples, and then you also have the peaches, a little dark peach, but it's a yellow peach. Um, these are all things that you can use in your, uh, to decorate your altar, to have incorporated into your meals as you go through this particular um, Sabbath holiday. And this is a time when the gardens are in full growth. Plants are <laughs> very full with produce. It's a time of being very full and very busy. Uh, I have tomatoes on my patio and I've got two bushes that are just loaded right now. Uh, not quite ripe yet, but they're heading there. The first grains of we're always fresh and ready at this time and this is a time seen as a time of great celebration and if you think back to the spring equinox Ostara in Beltane around the first of May this is all about using the fertility rites to impregnate the earth to get things started so to speak to strike that fire of creation this is the first sign that those fertility rites are bearing fruit is La, uh, Lamas or Lufnasa this is also a time, if we go back to the uh, Tuatha Dé uh, god, because he was a very skilled craftsman, these are times to celebrate the craftsmen in your group, the people who create things with their hands. And you can also include making like corn dollies with corn husks and the little paper dolls for the kid, little ones to play with. Um, those are all things that were traditionally used in this time. Writing poetry, songs, uh, acting, especially in the evenings, because you're starting some of your harvesting here, and after everyone harvested, you always have, well, most always, <laughs> have a little dinner or get together at the end of the day, and this is where you could, you know, sing and recite poetry and have some uh, plays and things like that just for fun. Uh, you'd also could celebrate sewing and painting, crocheting, knitting, all of the fun stuff like that, and. It would appear to me anyway that this was a time, this time frame and this type of work is what inspired our modern day farmers markets and artists markets. And if you ever have been to a Ren Fair, I've only been able to see videos because the closest ones are like five and six hours away from me. Uh, the Ren Fairs very much call back to some of the Lamas Lufnasa type celebration stuff. They're a little bit more over the top, but you can get an idea of what was going on then. Um, this is also, if you are working on skills or you're looking at something you've been thinking about trying and haven't quite got there yet, this is the time to add to your skill set, to take it to another level, to start the process of learning a new one. Uh, the, basically, the gods are in your favor if you wanted to start working with some skill at this time. And it's also a good time to acknowledge your talents and to thank the divine, Lord and Lady, however you see the divine, uh, for granting you this gift of your skill set. And those, like I said, the skills are broad. It's not just one or two things. 
And to celebrate, another thing that used to be done, traditionally anyway, is practicing hunting skills or other forms of outdoor games. Archery was a good example of this. Um, there was also a time of bards and stories, you know, going out and telling tall tales, telling historical records, just kind of enjoying a little bit of frivolity and chill time because uh, your harvest has been go getting underway. It's the start of the big season of harvesting. So in some of the legends, this is a time when the Lord of the Sun would die and travel to the underworld, bringing the solar energy with him into the darkness. In other legends, he begins to fade. This is the first sign that he is aging. And the sun follows his fading until Sawain when he enters the underworld to be reborn again at Yule. And personally, the second path is the one that resonates with me because the Lord just doesn't disappear one day. That's when the darkness really sets in. So the fading it down is how I like to see it, and that's the one I usually go with. And what's interesting, though, is even though this is a time when the Lord is starting to fade from the world, this particular celebration out of the three harvest festivals is traditionally been the most happy and joyous. It's very much about, look, the, pro the fields are abundant, life is good, the sun is high, all, the fun, all of the fun enjoyment, the food is just, you've got food everywhere at this point. So to me, it makes more sense to have this as the start of a fading process rather than the Lord yeeting himself into the underworld. So <laughs> that's just oh, how I've always seen it when I go through these. Um, the harvest is abundant. This is also saying you've survived another year and you're, you have the produce, you have the animals that are fattening up, you have all of the stuff. You're going to plan to survive for another year. This holiday is in this aspect is all about celebration because you made it and you're heading out again you're going to have food through the winter this is the first sign of all of that happening and this is when some of your sweeter fruits are coming out your apples your peaches and you know that kind of thing so very much <laughs> celebratory in nature um, if you are working or looking to set intentions these are times to set intentions for protection prosperity really working on the long-term goals because in this moment you have seen some results and now it's time to take those results and move forward with them so you're really in a good spot as far as that goes and this these are goals to be like oh look I've made it through these steps this is my big goal over here what are my next steps and then you can start to plan accordingly also something fun to do at this time of the year and I say fun because it's actually kind of exciting when you do this it's looking back over the last six months back to about um, Candelamas and February 2nd and you look back over that six month window give or take and you kind of start to look at things and go how far have I come what have I accomplished what have I manifested what have I taken to a different level have I worked on my goals and when you find that you have actually moved a lot further than you feel in the moment because you know time is really weird like that uh, you can celebrate those accomplishments put some pride into it healthy pride not ego pride healthy pride is look at what I've accomplished this is so cool I still have a ways to go I can and I'm still growing but this is what I've gotten done so far like this is awesome and that's the kind of energy that you can work with at this time uh, and if you're like the majority of us, <laughs> because Lufnasa this year is on a Thursday, meaning we're probably busy, we're probably at work, we've got something going on, um, you can always also just take a break anytime between the hours of 2 and 5 in the afternoon. Um, it's This is an approximate time for the Sabbath, whereas Letha, Midsummer, the highest point of the, the, thi of the year, is around noonish, the 11 to 1 window of time. For Lufnasa, it's between 2 and 5. Maybon is going to be between 5 and 7, and Sawain is twilight. So you've got this window of times that you can pop into <laughs> a sacred space to do so. And if you can just take even a 15-minute break, turn your face up to the sun, feel that warmth, the love, the heat from the sun, the rejuvenating aspects of the sun, 
Um, who knows, you might end up with some uh, divine downloads going on at the same time. And while you're on your break, take a little treat with you. Take a pear, take a peach, take a plum, a nectarine, um, or even an apple, and have that at that time just kind of as your way to remind yourself, tap into the energy of the holiday, uh, remembering that all the blessings that you have a of achieved so far all the blessings that the, you've been blessed with and moving forward what things are you working on this is the harvest is starting what is it that you have accomplished so far and what is it that has come into manifestation for you um, you can also if you have a lunch at this time barley bread um, or rye bread something along the bread line and then or cooked barley or some of the cooked grains as a salad is another good option because it's warm where I'm at, so hot food, not a <laughs> not an interest of mine. Um, but you, you're eating it with the intention of honoring the Lord and Lady, of sitting there with them, communing with them, um, sharing gratitude and energy between the two. And that can have a very powerful effect on a person's mind and body, just taking the time to tap into that energy. In a lot of modern beliefs, these holidays, these Sabbaths, are a new thing that only have been around since Gerald Gardner. But there is a lot of reference and research when you start digging into this that puts these specific eight days going back to the Druids, going back to aspects of Egyptian times, not exact dates, mind you, but around the window of time because these were important times to people whose survival at times was based upon harvesting, hunting, gathering, preserving, planting at the right times, everything, to everything there is a season, and the seasonal shifts were important to all people back in the day. We think that in our modern world, all this stuff's all new. It's, re it's really not. These are cons kind of consistent. I won't say exactly consistent because that's a fallacy, but they are, there's time periods and celebrations that fall at these windows of time that can go back a long period of time. Uh, I won't say to the beginning of written records, but you could possibly make that assumption if you wanted to, you know, backdate a calendar that far. So, there is some of that. Now, uh, we're going to do a gentle guided meditation, nothing super intense but just as a way to kind of tap into the energy of the Sabbath a little bit nicer or a little bit deeper. Um, this is not going to be a deep meditation. It's going to be pretty light, but just go with the images that come to you as we go through this. So, make sure you're not driving or, you know, operating any machinery. Um, should be about a 10 minute window here. We're not going to get too intensive. Just just a little <laughs> little tap in. Um, so if you want to, you can just sit back and relax. Let your breathing fall into a pattern of in through your nose, filling your abdomen to its fullest. Exhaling out through your mouth, allowing the tension to flow away from your body. Take a deep breath in through your nose, breathing in that beautiful orange energy, warming your heart and soul. Exhale, feeling the tension melt from your shoulders and your neck. Take another nice deep breath in through your nose, breathing in beautiful fiery red energy, the energy of creation and passion, the warming fire that heats your body. Exhale, releasing all stress or tension from the day. Any thoughts that are just in the way, let them flow out with your breath. Take another deep breath in, breathing in that beautiful gold of the wheat of the field, the gold of the noonday sun, breathing that beautiful healing energy in. Exhale, allow your mind to wander up to the center of your head. When you're in the center of your mind, with your mind's eye, visualize a great door. The door to meditation and to the sacred space. 
This door can be oak, metal, even a stone. Once you have the door's image in your mind, approach the door and notice that it opens silently, opening to a path, going to the stone circles. You step out of the door and notice that you're carrying a small parcel. It can be a wooden box or a cloth bag. And within this bag, you carry your craft, your art, handmade items, or some skill that you are bringing to offer to sell or exchange. Whatever you create is in this bag. You walk along the path. It's the mid-afternoon sun. It's warming your skin. You look up with your eyes closed, feeling that smile as the sun warms your face and your heart. You see the stone circle up ahead and there are many people already there and there's a lot arriving with you as well. You join the celebrants as you enter the circle. You look around and notice that this is kind of a marketplace. There's booths, there's bartering, there's lots of laughter and jokes. You find your space and you set up what it is that you have to offer, being it an art, a skill, a service, or something else. And as you're doing so, hanging the draperies and setting up the tables, you're laughing with your booth neighbors and joking, making little exchanges for a cookie here or a glass of mead there. The mood is very happy, very light, relaxed as you take a break from the busyness of the first harvest. A bell tolls gently in the south. You glance away from the person you were speaking to to see the Lord and Lady coming in the south gate. All eyes turn to witness the sight of the Harvest Lord and the Lunar Lady. The presence of the Sun God and the Moon Goddess make the goods offered by all participants glow in their presence. They begin to walk around the circle, visiting, bartering, laughing with all who are gathered. The Lord and Lady are amongst their people. As you watch the Lord and Lady's progress, you notice that they don't exchange money or something like that for their goods. They offer a blessing as an exchange for the products. As you're doing your usual fiddling in your booth, adjusting things to make them look perfect, the Lord and Lady arrive. The Lord is gently teasing the Lady as they walk up about filling Summerland with all of her goodies. And she says that he's been collecting as much, if not more, than her. They laugh and exchange a quick kiss. You try to look away, but the Lord calls your attention back. He has selected one of the items you have to offer. You take the item, wrap it in cloth, or if it's a service, you perform the service. The lady then says, we offer a blessing. Please offer your hands. You extend your hands in front of you, palms up. The Lord places his palms on the top and the lady cradles your hand from underneath. As they hold your hands, you feel a warmth spreading from their hands into you. This blessing is personal, and only you know what they offer. Pay attention to the first thing that comes to mind when they touch you. This may be the area of the gift that they are giving. You feel the energy flowing through your hands, up your arms, into your heart and radiating out. Does this energy plant itself in a certain location or does it flow through your body? Does it change from the golden color as it comes in to something different? Allow this beautiful healing energy to flow through you flow around you. The Lord and Lady gently withdraw their hands. 
radiant smiles on their faces, and you know your face radiates the same smile. You hold your hands to your chest, feeling the warmth spreading through your body. You thank them for your, their gracious gift, and they thank you for yours. The Lord and the Lady move around the group until each person has been blessed by their loving hands. The evening light signals their departure through the southern gates. The Lord and Lady leave, and the first little crisp chill touches the air. You carefully, almost reverently, pack up all of your wares back into the parcel you brought in, always amazed by how everything fits into such a small box. Bidding your farewell to your neighbors until the next gathering, you return to the path and walk quietly back to the great door. You feel at peace, you feel healed, you feel energized for the coming year, months and year. Stepping back through the door into your own body again, taking a deep breath, feeling your body fill back up with who you are, bringing the blessings of the Lord and Lady with you. Exhale, feel yourself settle in, feeling peaceful. Take another deep breath in, anchoring yourself back into this now moment. Exhale, peace and harmony surround. Take another deep breath in, wiggling your fingers and your toes, bringing yourself back into a waking state. Exhale, and whenever you're ready, you may open your eyes. And with that, you have celebrated the first of Lamas or Lufnasas, if you've never celebrated before. Uh, and there's a little bit of energy that comes through whenever you work with this type of celebration. So if you have the time today between the hours of 2 and 5, whatever your time zone is, take a little break, go step out in the sun, and just enjoy the fact that the first harvests have begun. With that, I will let you guys go, and I will talk to you in a future video.